Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Lawrence Welk Show, celebrating more than 60 years on television. Now sit back and enjoy the show selected especially for public television. Hello, I'm Mary Lou Metzger and welcome to the Lawrence Welk Show. The program you're about to see was produced in 1968 and is the California Show. Jimmy Roberts sings his signature song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. Norma Zimmer sings When You Wish Upon a Star, and Arthur Duncan dances to Hooray for Hollywood. Following our program, I'll be visiting with a very special lady, Margaret Heron, Welk Syndication Manager. She'll share with us some fascinating stories about the Lawrence Welk Show, so stay with us. And now, California, here I come. <laughs> A sun kiss, Miss said, don't be late. That's why I can hardly wait. Open up that golden gate, California, here I come. California, here I come. Right back where I started from. Where flowers, a flowers bloom in the sun. Each morning at dawn and birdies sing and everything a sun. very proud of its movie industry, and especially of the fine pictures turned out by the late Walt Disney. Marion Florin plays the song from Disney's delightful movie, Mary Poppins, A Spoonful of Sugar.
That's a song which added a whole city to Jimmy Roberts' fan club. That wonderful city by the Golden Gate. I left my heart in San Francisco high on a hill it calls to me to be where Wonderful. 
And Mr. Skudisnan and I like to know that many of the records played at the park feature the beautiful voice of Norma. We have several California natives in our musical family. Here's one of them, Arthur Duncan, a Pasadena boy. Oh, it's yes. Hey, it's just about time for him to show up. Oh, I'm so excited. Do you think he's as good looking as his picture is? Oh, who cares? He's yummy. Oh, pardon me, sir. Does Six Gun Dale come out this gate? You mean Six Gun Dale to sing and dance in Cowhand of the Prairie? That's the one. You know, folks, I know all his routines. Let me show you. Oh, hey. Packing my grip, my grip, and I'm leaving today, today, cause I'm taking a trip, a trip, California way, the way, I'm gonna settle down and never more own, and make the San Fernando Valley my home, my home, I'll forget my sin, my sin, I'll be making new friends, new friends, where the West begins. West begins and the sunset ends. Sunset ends. Cause I've decided where yours truly should be. And it's the San Fernando Valley for me. For me. I think that I'm safe in Staten. She will be waiting when my lonely journey is done. Journey is done. And kindly old Reverend Thomas made us promise he will make the two of us one two of us one so i'm hitting the trail the trail to the cow country country you can forward my mail my mail care of rfd rfd i'm gonna settle down and never more own and make the san fernando valley my home my home And make the San Fernando Valley my home My home And make the San Fernando Valley my home My home, sweet
beautiful youngsters and how they love their work. Um, we take you now to the colorful old Mexican district of Los Angeles. Andre Willis has a song to match the scene. Bésame, bésame mucho Como si fuera esta noche la última vez Bésame mucho Que tengo miedo tenerte y perderte Después Quiero tenerte muy cerca Mirarme en tus ojos Estar junto a ti Piensa que tal vez mañana Estaré muy lejos Muy lejos de aquí Bésame Bésame mucho Como si fuera Bowl is world famous. Bob Rawson gives us a sample of the music you might hear at the bowl. Greek's piano concerto in A minor. Fabulous program. Coming up is Larry Hooper singing Talk to the Animals, and Joanne Castle and Bob Lido have a lot of fun with San Francisco. Now remember, at the end of the show, I'll be visiting with a wonderful lady and special friend to the entire Welk musical family, Margaret Heron. So stay with us. And now, back to the show. The repository for some of the strangest and most terrifying monsters of the deep. 
You folks are very fortunate today. A team of eminent ichthyologists is here studying these marine specimens. Perhaps these distinguished gentlemen can give us a scientific report on this underwater life. Hello in there. Hello out there. Stop, said the mama fishy, or you will get lost. The three little fishies didn't want to be boss. The three little fishies went off on a spree, and they swam and they swam right out of the sea. A boop boop, did them that them what them chew. A boop boop, did them that them what them chew. A boop boop, did them that them what them chew. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. Little fishies look at all the whales and quick as they could, they turn on their tails. Back to the pool in the meadow they swam and they swam and they swam all over the dam. A boop boop, did them that them water me chew. A boop boop, did them that them water me chew. A boop boop, did them that them water me chew. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. A boop boop, did them that them water me chew. A boop boop, did them that them water me chew. A boop boop, did them that them water me chew. A boop boop. Did him that I'm one of you. A boop boop, did him that I'm one of you. A boop boop, did him that I'm one of you. Thank you, fellows, for that scientific report. Um, this really didn't give you a chance to see how wonderful marine land really is. You have to see it in person. Probably the best known of California's famous missions is the one at San Juan Capistrano. Natalie Nevins has a song about this mission. When the swallows come back to Capistrano, that's the day you promised to to Catalina was one of the most popular attractions in Southern California. Tanya Fallon tells us about this vacation spot 
just 26 miles off the coast. Six miles across the sea Santa Catalina is waiting for me Santa Catalina, the island of a romance Romance, romance, romance Water all around it, everywhere Tropical trees and the salty air But for me, the thing that's awaiting There's a romance Seems so distant, 26 miles away, resting in the water serene. I'd work for anyone, even the Navy, who would float me to my island dream. 26 miles, so near yet far. I swim with just some water wings in my guitar. I can leave the wings, but I need the guitar for romance. Romance, romance, romance. Santa Catalina is waiting for me Santa Catalina, the island of a romance Romance, romance, romance Water all around it, everywhere Tropical trees and the salty air But for me, the thing that's awaiting There's a romance, 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 romance Romance, romance, romance Beside the bay I left my love in Avalon And sailed away I dream of her and Avalon From dusk till Give you a ticket. Do you know the way to San Jose? I've been away so long. I may go wrong and lose my way. Do you know the way to San Jose? I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose. LA is a great big freeway. Put a hundred down and buy a car. In a week, maybe two, they'll make. Bye. 
parking cars and pumping gas You can really breathe in San Jose They've got a lot of space There'll be a place where I can stay I was born and raised in San Jose I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose Fame and fortune is a magnet It can pull you far your ticket! <laughs> a little thing like a traffic ticket won't stop those girls. They're really going places. Steve Smith is another California native. Steve was born in Alameda, California. Right now we find him at the Griffith Park Observatory in Los Angeles and his song, Fly Me to the Moon. Fly me to the moon And let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like On Jupiter and Mars In other words, hold my hand In other words Darling, kiss me Fill my heart with song And let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words Please be true in other words, I love you Fill my heart with song And let me sing forevermore You are all I long for All I worship and adore In other words, please be true in other words, I love you. Very excellent. Keep up the good work. Joanne Castle from Bakersfield, California, and Bob Leader from Jersey City, New Jersey, team up for a salute to San Francisco. <laughs> Go, oh 
open your golden gate You let no stranger wait outside your door San Francisco, here is your wandering one Saying I wander no more Other places only make me love you best Tell me you're the heart of all the golden west San Francisco, welcome me home again I'm coming home to go roaming no more Places only make me love you best Tell me you're the heart of all the gold and west San Francisco, welcome me home again I'm coming home to go I'm coming home to go We're coming, coming home, home to go, go. Animals. Just imagine him chatting with a chimp and chimpanzee. Imagine talking to a tiger, chatting with a cheetah. What a neat achievement it would be. If I could talk to the animals, learn their languages, maybe take an animal degree. I'd study elephant and eagle, buffalo and beagle, alligator, guinea pig and flea. I would converse in polar bear and python, and I would curse in fluent kangaroo. If people ask me, can you speak rhinoceros? I'd say, of course there is. Can't you? If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt, dance, squeak, dance, walk with the animals, and they could talk to me. I'd learn to speak in antelope and turtle, or Pekingese would be extremely good. If I were asked to sing in hippopotamus, I'd say, why not of us? And <laughs> would. And if you just stop and think of it, there's no doubt of it, I would win a place in history. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could squeak and squawk and speak and talk to me suffering coconuts you're okay in my book doc no. <laughs> nice work dr hooper and company on while we're saluting california let's not forget another tourist attraction the world famous hollywood palladium well, we have the pleasure of playing every Saturday night. And by the way, many of your letters have asked for more instrumental music. I'd like to make you people a promise. In our future shows, we're going to feature more bad music. In fact, we're going to start right now. Gentlemen. <laughs>
that man. You know, folks, of all the interesting things to see in California, we forgot to include one of the newest and most beautiful attractions, Lawrence Welk's Country Club Village just north of Escondido. It's delightful. Yes, there are many spectacular things in this state. The scenery in Northern California is some of the most beautiful in the world. Here's Joe Feeney in the setting of the famous California Redwoods. When the golden sun sinks in the hills And the toil of a long day is o'er Though the road may be long in the lilt of a song I forget I was weary before Far ahead where the blue shadows fall I shall come to contentment and rest And the toils of the day Will be all charmed away In my little gray home in the west There are hands that will welcome There are lips I am burning to kiss There are two eyes that shine Just because they are mine And a thousand things other men miss It's a corner of heaven itself Though it's only a tumble-down nest But with love brooding there Why no place can compare With my little gray I hope you've enjoyed our trip through California. I'm so excited about this visit with my special guest. She spent most of her time behind the scenes, but that didn't stop her from being the heart of the organization. Please welcome our syndication manager and my dear friend, Margaret Heron. Uh, I'm so glad you're here, Margaret. <laughs> thank you so much, Mary Lou. It's because of you that I'm here. As you know, I do not like being in front of the camera. <laughs> It's been fun all the years being behind the camera, but not in front. Well, you pick all the shows that air weekly on public television. What made you choose the California show for yourself? Well, I chose the California show because I was born in California, and I had the good fortune to be born in Santa Monica, California, where Lawrence's corporation offices have been since he came to California back in 1951. So it's been always been my home and still is to this day. 
Now, you went all through school with the Lennon sisters. In fact, not, even not just school, Kathy and I were born four days apart in St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. So I've known Kathy since she was born, and we went to St. Mark's School in uh, Venice, California, and then on to St. Monica's in Santa Monica, California. So I've known the girls all their life. Yeah, grew up with them. That's so how sure. did you come to work for Lawrence Welk? Well, I graduated from high school and really didn't know what I wanted to do. Thought I would maybe work for a year, put money away for college, and then move on. But um, that isn't the way it turned out. I applied for a fan mail secretary job with the Welk organization, and Lois Lamont, Lawrence's personal secretary at that time, took a chance on someone that was 18 years of age and totally green, green and uh, coming out of Catholic school for 12 years, so um, it's paid off. I'm in my, been with the organization now for over 46 years. Oh my gosh. I know, a long time, but it's been, it's truly been um, my pleasure. It's been my pleasure to be a part of the wonderful organization. Well, today you're the syndication manager. That's correct. Now, just what is that? Well, the syndication manager, when we had the privilege of going to public television, uh, I took over the responsibilities of being the liaison for the Welk Group with our public broadcasting stations and also with our fans. I mean, I've made friends all over the United States because of Lawrence and having the tremendous fans that we do, the support that we receive, we would have never been able to go on public television. We've had the partnership with the great people of OETA, the Oklahoma Network, and that partnership with the Welk Syndication has is, is really been um, a major, major thing for all of us. I mean, it's kept the Welk Show on now for over 20 years on public broadcasting. So we're very, very fortunate because of our fans, because of the loyalty of our fans. Now, Lawrence Welk had a reputation for being a very frugal man. You know a generous side of oh, him. Oh, definitely. Lawrence was a very frugal man, and I think to keep an organization the size of ours together, you had to be. Uh, Lawrence established a foundation many, many years ago. He was very, um, very, very generous always to his home state, to his hometown of Strasburg, North Dakota. Never forgot that. Um, if you go today to visit Strasburg, where his birthplace is, you'll see the Lawrence Welk Park, you see the Lawrence Welk swimming pool. In fact, everything in Strasbourg is pretty much <laughs> Lawrence Welk. <laughs> so he was. And even when some of our band members or our musical family were took ill, Lawrence always made sure that they still received their salary. He gave that support. Um, Lawrence was very, very generous in many ways, and he never, ever wanted people to know about that. He always just, um, you know, he did it and just kept it quiet. Very supportive to the Santa Monica organizations in Santa Monica because that became his home. So he, he was very different from what people thought about him. He was very, very generous. We established a profit sharing plan when no one even knew the word profit sharing, and that plan is still in existence today for the Welk employees. You were close to Lawrence. What are some of your favorite stories as a person and as a boss? I always think we always tried to get to the office before him in the morning, and we never did. Not possible. <laughs> Just not possible. I mean, we would be there like a quarter after seven, and he would already be in the office. We used to work from about um, 7.30, and he usually tried to get out of the office by 11, 11.30, quarter of 12, head up to the Bel Air Country Club, have a bite of lunch, and that was usually like yogurt and and just very, very light. Lawrence always watched his weight. And then he played golf, and golf saved his life. It really did. It gave him a chance to get away from that tremendous stress of that weekly show. Christmas was a big season around the Welk Show. Oh, Christmas in the Lawrence Welk office started about August. We sent out every year, Lawrence sent out about 269 thousand Christmas cards. Now you're talking before anything with computers. You're talking strictly with and specially hand addressed. They had to be hand addressed. Lawrence wanted that personal going out to that audience. And it's surprisingly, even today I hear from people that they remember receiving a Christmas card from Lawrence. 
There's a gentleman that should definitely be mentioned, and that's Charlie Spira. Oh. Charlie was my friend, my business associate, my teacher, my mentor. Um, I was doing secretarial work. I was never doing syndication work. I knew nothing about calling a station and selling a show. He taught me everything. We worked together on the series Memories with Lawrence Welk back in the, er uh, the early 80s after the show went out of first run syndication. We worked on a 1984 Christmas special. We worked on a 1985 Christmas special and sold it together. Then we moved on to the great years of public television and um, uh, just a, a special man for me because he was so open with his knowledge. In 1992, when Lawrence passed away, oh. you were part of preparing all of those announcements for the media. Back, um, we knew Lawrence's health was failing and Larry came to me and asked myself and of course Joanne Young our great writer and co-producer of many of our Welk specials. And of course, working with Joanne on this last special, we just did TV Treasures, it was my pleasure. He wanted, Larry wanted something really special for his father, because we knew what was happening with his life. So about, oh, six months before Lawrence died, we went through all of certain pictures, certain footage. She really worked on certain copy that we could put together. And we went into an edit room and worked on Lawrence's obit. It was probably the hardest thing that ever happened to me with the Welk organization, to have to work on an obit. But we knew we had to have something structured before the media would get a hold of his death. So we did, we put it together, but it was really hard to sit in that edit bay and keep hearing today in Santa Monica, California. Of course, you know, we, but we did. So then, of course, we lost Lawrence in May of 1992. And probably the very worst day was that day when the media actually found out about it. It was a frenzy. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon when the media found out. And all phone lines into the Welk organization in Santa Monica were lit. And I was trying to service media uh, all the media, all the public papers, trying to get out UPAP wires. So we were, I worked from about midnight that night to service everyone, but it was a very, very hard day. I had been with Lawrence that Sunday evening when he had passed away because Lawrence and Fern were like another parents to me. Family. Being so young, I kind of just grew up with them. I grew up with the organization. Lawrence gave me that privilege to do that. And uh, Why do you think the show is still so popular after all these years? The show is an American institution. It's a classic. There'll never be a show in the history of television that did what the Welk Show did. It's because of the fans. It's because of what Lawrence stood for. And you're a big part of that, Margaret. Thank you so much for being with us. And thank you for your continued love and support. Until next time, as Lawrence always said, keep a song in your heart. said America should hold you accountable.